Yeah, so sometimes I get a deck list and I'm like, oh, I don't know one of the cards in there. And then there's this deck list where I had to read like basically all of the cards in the deck. <laughs> Hello, folks, Phil Gallagher of Thraben, you here for another modern video. Uh, today we are playing by yet another monstrosity by Lucas B., um, who put together that red white Delver deck that uh, we played uh, probably about two weeks ago for you all? So, today we are going to be playing a modern deck built around Bard class. All right. So, one of those nice little level up thingies. So, uh, to start with, legendary creatures you control enter the battlefield with an additional plus one, plus one counter on it. And even if you don't know what you do, just know that the creatures in this deck are legendary creatures. So they're going to get bigger. Next, you can pay two mana to level it up, and then legendary spells you cast cost two less to cast. Uh, this only reduces the colored mana. And then at the final level, uh, which costs five mana, whenever you cast a legendary spell, exile the top two cards of your library. You may play them this turn. So here's, here's the theory. The theory is that once you have Bard class leveled up to five, you can essentially like storm off and just roll through most of your deck because like we just have all of these legendary cards and like there's Mox Amber and Oath of, Oath of Nyssa that are also legendary. And this does say legendary spell. You can do something like cast a Mox Amber, effectively draw two cards like Many of the things that you draw are going to be free, and you just like churn, 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 churn through your deck. Um, that is the theory behind this. I'm just going to take a quick look at the various creatures that are in this deck. Playing Legacy or Modern, you're probably familiar with everyone's favorite monkey. I'm not going to focus on that here. Uh, Zergo Bell Striker was something that saw a decent amount of play in Standard of Days Past, and it also has the dash mechanic. Um, Galia of the Endless Dance is a 2-2 a haste creature, and when you attack with three or more creatures, you can discard a, random, a card at random. If you do, you draw two. Uh, Rada Air to Keld. Whenever it attacks, you can add two red mana, and it's a mana dork itself. These names, though. Targnar, or Demon Fang Gnoll. Um, if you attack with creatures power six or greater... Attacking creatures get another plus one, and you can also double this thing's power. Uh, there's Bergy, which has seen a decent amount of legacy play in the Ruby Storm deck. Um, uh, it's going to let us carry some mana over. We're probably not going to care about the horn side with this deck. Uh, there's Essica, God of the Tree, uh, which is another mana dork uh, that also gives your creatures, your legendary creatures, vigilance and turns them into mana dorks. Um, it is theoretically possible for us to play the Prismatic Bridge. Uh, we're a two-color deck, but we do have four mox ambers. Uh, so on the off chance that we really do storm off, uh, we could theoretically find triple mox amber and cast that. Um, that would be one of those achievement unlocked sorts of moments, though, for sure. Um, there's Clothis, which has also seen a ton of legacy play, just as a way to, uh, like, slowly bleed out your opponents. Uh, it's gotten a little bit worse uh, since the printing of Prismatic Ending and Endurance, though. Um, we have Samut, uh, which gives other creatures haste, which is a good way to win after you've comboed off. Uh, and then there's Grand Warrior Rada. Uh, three four haster whenever one or more creatures you control attack add that much mana to your mana pool and it doesn't empty uh, the last thing that's in the deck here is domri anarch of bolas uh, your creatures get plus one plus O, oh, and you kind of can get a veil of summer effect by plussing or you can uh, minus to make something fight um there's there's so many cards in this deck that i just didn't know and i'm going to be rereading a bunch of these throughout this video uh, the sideboard has just a bunch of generic red green good stuff. Blood Moons, Abrades, Veil of Summers. I don't know about that one Weather the Storm, but uh, maybe it'll save my ass if we get paired against Storm or something. Um, yeah, the sideboard cards are pretty stock, so uh, let's let's jump into a league and see how this crazy thing goes. Um, I expect the rounds to go fast. One way, one way or the, another, like we're either going to just turn a bunch of creatures sideways and kill our opponent, we're going to combo off with Bard class, or we're not going to interact with our opponent and die. All right, 
Um, if you want to try out this deck yourself or you want to get one of your videos on the channel, that information's in the video description. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing for legacy modern and vintage content five days a week. And if you're really enjoying, consider becoming a YouTube member for access to a few exclusive videos. You know, consider throwing me a like too. The easiest way to support any content creator, not just me. And it's free! Okay, so Mox Amber only works if you already have a legendary creature or planeswalker. Um, so this hand has no mana, effectively. Um, this hand has mana. That's a little weird. Uh, I think I'll keep this. I think I'm just going to throw back the three mana card. And uh, we can just play a nice, nice easy aggro hand here. Have a two drop attacker, double lightning bolt, oath of oath of Nissa, blah, 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 oath of Nissa to fish for another creature. We'll see how that fares in the grand scheme of things. Okay, it has resolved. My opponent sat there and thought for a long time, which I don't know if means they actually could interact with it, or if they were trying to figure out what I'm playing, or if they were getting a pizza. It's always hard to say. All right, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and crash in for my damage now, and then I'll play oath of Nissa post combat and kind of see where things go. All right, damage successful. Please go in the bottom in any order. They do. I don't know that I want to fetch yet. All right. What are we looking at? Oh. That's, uh... That's how this league's going to be, huh? Rude. All right, so now my opponent's going to fetch and get a tapped land of some kind, probably. Yep. <clears throat> uh, okay. Bug Triome. I think I'm going to go ahead and just end of turn fetch this tapped. I don't think I need to be throwing lightning bolts at the face at the cost of my own life yet. I don't really know what my opponent is doing. Uh, but I know that I'm dashing. Yeah, you are, Phil. Mm. Okay. Now we've made that terrible joke. Get in the red zone. Uh, fatal push. Fatal push. Bye, Regavan. So I'm guessing my opponent is skewed towards the control side of the spectrum. But I don't actually know for sure. Um, but my uh, my lines of play are pretty linear here. It's uh, it's turn cards sideways. And let's see what Zergo can do. All right, Zergo has succeeded in getting in the red zone. I'll just be passing the turn here. How bad is it? Oh, okay, you're just going to draw two? Um, I think I am going to take this opportunity to go to the dome. I don't know if this is correct, but my opponent probably has some actual factual counter spells in their deck. And if I can get my burn in at times where I know either it resolves or it costs my opponents a force of negation plus another blue card, that sounds pretty good to me. All right. You don't have haste or anything, do you? Nope. Let's crash in. Go, go, gadget, Zergo. Get him. All sorts of things can happen here. Okay. Yep, there is uh, not much to be done about that. My opponent will get their two for one. But I am not going to not attack. Uh, I, need to, I need to try to get over the finish line. All right. Let us cast a questionable green-red legendary creature and see what happens. I'm to the scary point of the game where, like, the control opponent is still alive with seven cards in hand. I'm not super hopeful about my chances because big, big dumb planeswalkers can start coming down. Okay, they do have at least a fourth color. Okay, it is Renin 6. I believe I am going to have to ignore... And just try to go to the dome and finish this. All right, uh, I am not doing a very good job of hitting land drops here. I hate, 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 hate that I have to ignore this planeswalker, but I just don't think I am likely to win the game unless I go for the dome. Uh, that's uh, that's real good. Fatal push kills this. They don't even need to use the snapcaster body yeah i think uh i think this one is now lost i'm going to keep playing i think the tide has turned uh choose an oath of nissa to keep we'll keep the new one the old one was a scumbag 
All right, I will take a land here. And uh, I'm just going to fetch tapped now. And next turn I can play a Planeswalker <laughs> that I can't protect. And I still can't cast this. Um, but life's pretty bad. My opponent also gets to make land drops forever now. Which is no bueno for me. I've, s I've shown them two dash creatures already, so they're not even going to attack with Snapcaster. So I'm playing this Domery. And then next turn I can have five mana for Samut. I, I guess that's the, the plan. I suppose I shouldn't have played Mox Amber until after Domery resolved. Because of Bard class specifically. Alright, Counterspell. Nope. Okay. I will plus, and then that means that I have the mana necessary, sorry, the loyalty necessary where what's on board currently does not kill my Planeswalker. And my opponent can just play another Flash creature and, like, that ends me. That's a lot of mana. Is that a factor fiction? Uh, I think this one's far enough gone where uh, I'm going to go ahead and concede for entertainment value. Alright, what do I like versus this deck? I kind of like Cindervines as burn. I kind of like Clothis as burn. Domri Rod is probably a better Planeswalker than the Anarch of Bolas in this deck. Hell, I might play Blood Moons. Like, my opponent is a greed pile. I think Blood Moon might make sense on the play and not on the draw. I don't know that I want to pay mana for selection, but Oath of Nyssa is a legendary thing that... Oh no, this doesn't turn on Mox Amber. Yeah, I think I'm going to ignore my selection here for boarding in other cards. I think I'm just going to trim... A couple of expensive cards. And the green green cards would be hard to cast if I Blood Moon anyway. Um, I think I'm going to board like this. I could also Veil of Summer. I don't, know, I don't like Veil of Summer in matchups where like I'm playing a fair deck and I expect to tap out and use my mana every turn, which I like very much do with this deck. Like Veil of Summer is super cool, you know, when we get to turn eight or something like that but i don't know that it's super useful in the early game like i think uh, i think on the draw i'm going to play veil of summer over the blood moons but on the play i think i like the idea of being able to mize a game with blood moon uh, this has no mana this has one mana which does not appear to be enough oh man we're going to five um this is probably a pretty reasonable five card hand i keep like these and toss back these two. So we'll keep this. We'll toss back those two cards. I will play Ye Old Ragavan. And this is a time where I could really use the Ragavan making it to turn two. Okay, there's your land drop. All right. I think even though there are going to be some times where I might, mo might want multiple red, I am just going to fetch the forest here in case I do get a Blood Moon later. And we'll cast Galia of the Endless Dance. Okay. It resolves. Send them in. Am I going to get Fatal Pushed? Seems like it. Okay, well, maybe it's Lightning Bolted instead. Oh, wow. Interesting. I value the Ragavan so much more highly here, but my opponent might not really know what's going on with my deck. Which, to be honest, is fair. I think I'm just going to go ahead and use my treasure immediately to flip this Zergo onto the board. All right, opponent. Fuck! That's so good. Okay, so this doesn't immediately give me a benefit. So, just crash in with both of these. All right, opponent's at 11. Oh my god, Ragavan just found EE. -E. I can cast EE for zero and blow up my opponent's EE. Hot damn. What a beautiful play. All right. Just like that, I feel way better about everything that's going on. That was super cool. The bug triumph. The bug triumph. All right. What do you have? You have a Renin 6. I assume that kills Ragavan. Yeah. 
then I will kill your planeswalker. I think we're early enough in the game that I just need to do that rather than send that lightning bolt to the dome. Okay. Well, I don't mind a planeswalker. Um, but without the ragavan around giving me treasures, I'm a little light on mana. I have a mana sink now, which is cool. I think the scales are starting to tilt in favor of my opponent, if I'm being honest. Oh no. Alright, my opponent is going to have a lot of mana. Well, they only have two cards. That's the good news. Bad news is whatever is about to happen to me is probably not good for me in any capacity. Alright. The Zergo trades with a shark. Goodbye, Zergo. You served me well. And let's level up Bard class. And now my legendary spells cost two less to cast. Okay, cool. That means I can cast this next turn. Hopefully my opponent doesn't make a creature. Oh, good god. Dark Typhoon versus? Dark Typhoon on, like, answering my stuff or being bigger than my stuff is kind of a huge deal right now. I think it's Shark Typhoon versus. Alright, they, they took the draw four, which is fine with me. Okay. So this costs one mana. This turn is actually going to be really cool. Alright. Well, plus, my creatures can't be countered. Wait, this... Two less. Okay, so that still costs three, but I can just cast this. Um, yeah, one mana short of doing that thing. Let's see if Galia can get in the red zone successfully. Opponent has five cards, but I know a bunch of them are essentially fluff. There's a bunch of lands over there. That, though, is not a land. My opponent can Arc Mage's Charm to draw two cards. All right, there it is. Seems kind of hard for me to get to five mana to actually do the Bard class thing. Oh, a second Wilderness Reclamation. Is that all? I'm sure, this won't be scary. How does Shark Typhoon math work again? All right, so my opponent untaps all their lands and then they can float all their mana a second time. Okay, they're targeting Factor Fiction. Not cool. I mean, like, obviously cool for them, not cool for me. Oh, good God. Uh, uh, yeah, this is, this is awful. Like, no matter how I split this, they can end up with two different Archmage's Charms. Either by, like, the Archmage's Charms being in the same pile, or Snapcaster Mage being in the same pile as an Archmage's Charm. Yeah, uh, I don't, I don't love this. I'm going to end up in sight of the finish line, but not actually be able to get there. Okay, so they took Double Growth Spiral, Archmage's Charm. And now they're going to use one of those to throw another land into play. Okay. So, I can now cast this. Is it more important to make this uncounterable, or to destroy that Snapcaster Mage? Probably to make this uncounterable. Ah, it's weird, though. Yeah, let's make it uncounterable. I also don't love playing this out at sorcery speed, but it's uncounterable if I play it out at sorcery speed. All right, it's resolved and it's big. Wait, do you have haste too? Double strike, vigilance, haste. Okay, never mind. I did not read that text line fully. Yeah, get in there. I thought that was... Yeah, I thought this was in the deck because it gave other creatures you control haste, but there's a lot of words on this thing. Alright, so Snapcaster Mage takes a bullet there. Then we'll see what awful, horrible, disgusting things my opponent can do to me. I guess technically, like, Samet could kill them next turn. Like, it does just represent 10 damage on its own, but my opponent is going to get to, like, draw a bunch of cards and make an ungodly amount of mana. Draw two. Draw two. Like, in terms of the board, I'm technically ahead on board, but I, I don't really feel ahead. Like, if my opponent has a Shark Typhoon, for example, that probably just gets pretty close to one-shotting me, right? 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 16, 24. Yeah, they can just make a Shark that's large enough to kill me. There's two Shark Typhoons in Graveyard already. I don't know how many they play. But I do know that I... I'm not really playing around the things they have at this point. I am I am turning creatures sideways. And we we see if it works. 
Okay. All right, so they're just uh, they're just gonna draw two. I am good with that. It's it's obviously great for them, but we'll see. If I can minus Domri, make Samut fight Snapcaster Mage, and then get in for lethal. Oh, are you? You're a dude too, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, that's mighty interesting. Hmm. Is it just better to attack with two creatures? Probably just better to attack with two creatures. All right, get in there, Clothis. An indestructible, uncounterable, hasty god. Nice. Okay, all right. I didn't necessarily expect to win from that position. Uh, turns out that uncounterable clause is pretty sick. All right. I feel like I'm getting pinched on mana. Just in terms of, like, raw amount. I still don't know if I want to play Veil of Summer. The uncounterable idea is really cool, and that, like, the plus one off Domri probably won me that game. But, like, that was a long game, and I never got to five mana, for example. I guess I did Mull and throw back two mana sources, or something like that. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know on those Veil of Summers. My legacy heuristics tell me don't do it. But last time I played a deck that looked kind of like this, everyone was like, you should have boarded in Veil of Summer um, in Modern. Let's keep the Blood Moons in. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue to board like this. My opponent's mana base has some basics, but it's at least partially greedy. Um, this hand has mana, but it has no pressure. I think I'm going to mulligan this. Um, this hand is acceptable. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to keep... Three lands and two Zorgos, or just throw back a Zergo. I think I'm going to keep Threat Density here and throw back a Stomping Ground. All right. There's a basic, which is not what I want to see at the start. I also don't want to see that EE at the start, but, uh, you know, say Levy. Go, go, Gadget Zergo. All right. We don't have haste or anything, right? Nope. I want to play Shinka here. Just attack on in. See if my opponent blows the EE. Seems like no. Alright, then I will play this other creature that I have forgotten the name of. Targ Nar Demon Fang Gnoll. Okay. Uh, I'm never gonna remember that. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be honest with you. Alright, they've picked up a triome. I have a couple creatures on board, but like the Zergo is effectively dead already. I'm not even sure that I'm going to deal any combat damage on my turn. I'll try. End up. Okay. The one dies to Lightning Bolt. The Zergo will die to EE. Is Zergo going to get two more points of damage in? Zergo is not going to get two more points of damage in. Okay. I think I am just going to just cast this out. I have other dash creatures in my deck, and I have things that I might want to do for... A reasonable amount of mana. So it's gonna I'm okay with telegraphing that I have a creature. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just fetch a stomping ground here. I have another wooded foothills in hand, so if I draw a blood moon, I'm already good. Hmm. The horn may yet become relevant. Although I might need to just play this as a 3 3. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not sure about the back end of Bergy here. I just, like, have not dealt damage. Maybe that means I'm supposed to try and outgrind my opponent, but I don't think I'm going to outgrind the, like, Archmage's Charm, Snapcaster Mage, Recursion deck. Yeah, I'm just gonna... I'm gonna play this out as a creature. That may be wrong, but my opponent is light on cards, so, like, Bergy might be able to get in six or nine points of damage before my opponent finds a removal spell for it. Okay, my opponent picked up a second island there. Oh no. Okay. Uh, so basically the Snapcaster Mage is the most valuable thing here. Maybe do something like that. I don't think this is going to be a, a more skewed split than this. Okay, they're just uh, taking the three card pile. Which may mean that they have an answer to my creature already. Sure. Okay. And then again, because I already have access to a forest, 
I'm gonna grab a tapped stomping grounds. Ooh. Dash. And we can always yield to Bergy. Try to send in five damage. Oh, is it just gonna work? Oh, that's sick. Well, counterspell is not necessarily the hit that I was looking for. I think we'll just uh, call it a turn there. Monkey goes back to my hand and search for his Kanta flips. The Snapcaster Mage was scary because, like, Snapcaster Lightning Bolt immediately means that I have no board presence, plus Snapcaster Mage is around to block something else like a Ragavan. The Escanta is scary because, like, if my opponent finds removal spells, all of a sudden they have, like, an, a self-contained engine that is a little rough for me. And now I'm just going to go ahead and uh, catch out a forest, thin the deck a bit. Bard class. Bard class is excellent here. All right. The red-green for bard class. All right, that's good enough to prompt the Azkanta activation. Finding a wilderness, wilderness reclamation. Okay, that's fine. So now let's go ahead and level that up. Now my Ragavan is free. Well, I, I probably want to dash it, so if that's not true, I'm going to have to pay one. So afterwards, I will have one, two, three from Vergi, four from Ragavan. So I won't be able to level up Bard class fully, so I don't need to leave up green. I guess I still have green from the treasure. All right, well, let's get in the red zone. The additional plus one, plus one counter on the Ragavan here was huge. Okay, Cling to Dust is a little annoying. Um, but I suppose that's happening. All right, Ragavan, what are we hitting? Cascade Bluffs. Do I want to Lightning Bolt my opponent's face here? Probably reasonable to just do that here. All right, opponent is at three. I'll pass the turn. Now, next turn, I'm going to have some interesting things available to me. Um, but my opponent probably takes two turns in a row right here. Uh, which is uh, terrifying when Wilderness Reclamation becomes involved. Okay, so here's the Wilderness Reclamation trigger. So they'll activate Search for Escanta in response. Oh, no, they're floating mana. Oh, okay. Nexus of Fate. Forgot that was an instant. I was, I was not a standard player when that thing was dominating. Oh, wow, they just missed with uh, Search for Escanta. That's a feel bad. Also, just throwing it out there, my opponent has about six minutes left on block. That also could become an issue. Like if they are clicking through um, Cling to Dusts and Escantas and Wilderness Wreck Triggers and Floating Mana, um, that sort of thing can really add up. Yeah, I mean, search away. I am now at the point where, like, if any creature slips through, I probably win the game. It kind of depends on how like cognizant my opponent is of things like haste damage versus like stabilizing their life total with cling to dust. I think there's three total creatures in graveyard: their snapcaster, and then my two creatures that are already dead. Engineered explosives is pretty good. I don't know if my opponent knows this, but they really need to blow up my bard class, or I will do disgusting things. Okay, run and six is fine with me. All right, they just grabbed steam vents. Did not shock themselves. Weird, right? Yeah, so my opponent has used like a minute and 30 seconds on this turn so far. Okay, they have done it on three. To blow up Bergy. Okay. Now the Bard class is going to do gross things. Yeah, I think I'm just going to immediately level this to five. So I will, I think, dash this. It is just cast, right? Yeah. All right, let's always yield to that. All right, now I'm going. Yeah, yeah, go, go ahead and counter the Ragavan. That's, uh, that's fine. I will Mox Amber and draw two cards. Another Bard class, is this legendary? Oh, this isn't legendary. Neat. Uh, do I want to dash the Ragavan again? Or do I just want to, like, cast it for free? I think I want to dash it. That's going to be a forest. Go ahead and pay that. Oh, my opponent has zero cards at hand. Oh, okay, so they are dead. I'm doing my thing, though. I came here to combo. 
I'm, I'm not done with you. Don't concede. Don't concede. Let me let me do this. Oh yeah. Okay. So I can play a new bard class, and then cast Bergy for free. I'm uh, just confirming. Not legendary. Not legendary. Green, red, bard class. Oh, it doesn't do the other thing till the second level. Oops. All right, I guess I'm killing my opponent. Get him. All right, uh, we have we have gotten there with uh, with bards. Um, although that was a slog of our first round. Okay, um, this is a very different sort of hand than what I saw previously. I think I'm going to go ahead and keep this though. Like I have multiple bard classes and an oath of Nyssa to dig towards a creature to start things off. I think this is okay. We'll see. I I was about to say, I hope I'm not playing against something aggressive, but this is probably a Delver deck, or like a Death Shadow deck, or something like that. I'm I'm expecting to see Dragon Rage Channeler, is, is what I'm getting at. Okay, um, that is a Triome. Yeah, draw your card. Alright, I have a Critter. Let's grab an Oath of Nyssa. Alright, I have a Zergo and a Bergy. Uh, Zergo is better for getting on board and being aggressive. Bergy is better for trying to like combo off with bard classes. Um, I think I just want to get on board. What do you have, opponent? That is now four colors. Oh, are we just playing against like the same thing again? I wanted this league to be fast. <laughs> I I pulled up this deck because I I thought we were just gonna like go turbo. What it lo now looks like we are playing against like a Yorian variant of four color control. All right, we'll play the other Copper Line Gorge. Um, we're gonna just get the Bard class into play and get that ticking up. Like once I put two more mana into this, like these cards are going to become free. Mm. That's a pain in my ass. I can kill it immediately via like a lightning bolt or a dashed creature, so it's not the end of the world. I'm going to go ahead and fetch and shock myself here. And I'm going to go ahead and do the bard class again and just finish off that planeswalker. All right. Opponent has another cycling card. Is that it? I would be pretty happy if that's all you do. Okay, another land drop at the very least. Is the Orion going to hand? God damn it. Stop it. Okay, abundant growths are fine. I can try to just uh, do some cool things this turn. I think I'm going to go ahead and redeploy a bard class. We'll go ahead and level that up. Now this only reduces the cost of the colorless. So let's play my haste creature and see if I can kill this Teferi as a starting point. Sorry, I think I misspoke. This only reduces the colored costs. So I can't, for example, dash Ragavan. Let's send this out to Fairy. See if my opponent has like a path or a lightning bolt or something. Unholy Heat. Sure, uh, they do have four card types for Delirium. I am just going to go ahead and play out a couple of creatures now. I think that's enough pressure that I just want to do that. It's, it's possible I could get more value by waiting via Bard class. Alright, you have found more baubles. That's totally fine. Alright, Teferi pluses. Valakut. Oh. Is that so? I think this is a go to combat, see what happens sort of situation. So I think I'm going to send Zergo at Teferi and Ragavan at their face, mostly because I care about the treasure right now, for reasons that will probably become obvious in a minute if I get to start doing my thing. This is going to be a lot of mana, whatever this is. Oh, am I going to die? Is this just, just a supreme verdict, or um, is there a escape ship scenario that kills me? Okay, just uh, instant speed Omnoth. All right. So they can either protect their fairy or kill my rag, their Teferi or kill my Ragavan, depending on what uh, is more important to them. Okay, they're stopping the Ragavan. All right. So Planeswalker's dead. 
All right. I, I think I want to level up this bard class. Oh shit, I forgot about this land. Could have plussed and killed Omnoth, which would have been the best use of my turn. All right. Um, I don't think I need to shock myself. I have set myself up to potentially combo off next turn. Um, we'll, we'll see if I just die. Like, you know, escape, escape shift can be scary. What on earth is... Okay, yeah, that is escape shift. I assume this probably kills me. If it doesn't kill me, the Omnoth uh, also is a little rough. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. So that is 18 damage on its own. And then the Omnoth also triggers. Yeah. Good, good stuff. I actually have my opponent's deck in the queue that I'm going to try out. Um, I guess Blood Moons are probably good. I don't know if I'm going to play much else. Didn't really see too much of my opponent's deck, so I don't know all of the details of what exactly they're going to have in their giant pile of cards. Possible I want more answers to an Omnoth. Like, Lightning Bolt doesn't kill that. Um, Cinder Vines, I guess, technically could also uh, get rid of the... Oh, geez, the three-mana green card that changes all the basic land types to everything. Um, Dryad of the Elysian Grove, I think. Maybe pull out a couple of top-end creatures for the Blood Moons and start here. I think on the draw, I'm going to play the Magmatic Sinkhole. Uh, this is just a turn two Blood Moon. I'm going to keep this. Why not has Mulligan to five? Welcome to playing companion decks. I really don't like them. And sorry, to clarify, I, I, I don't think the payoff for Yorian is, is frequently worth it. All right. Is my Ragavan about to get answered? It feels like the answer is yes. If the answer is yes, I don't actually want to, like... If this is about to get pathed or bolted, I want to play Galia this turn because I'm not going to be able to Blood Moon. So I think I'm going to go ahead and go down that line. The Blood Moon will still be good next turn. All right, one, two. Let's try to send them. Okay. Get hit by Unholy Heat. I'll still get two damage in. And really, the Ragavan also got an honorary 2 damage by causing my opponent to shock, so that's that's fine in and of itself. Alright. Well, let's hit for 2 and play a Blood Moon. Looks like we're successful. I have two forests in the deck. Uh, I'll go ahead and fetch another out here. And uh, let's slam what is hopefully a game-winning card. Yep, nice mountain. Alright, Yorian goes to hand. Sure. Bard class. I think I'm just going to play that and level that up this turn rather than play the Oath of Nyssa. Just set myself up for more powerful future turns. I'm operating... Alright, I have some questions right now. I have some questions. First of all, how dare you? <laughs> uh, just... Just very surprised. Did I show them Bard class game one? Don't I don't remember if I did. Even if I did, do you play Force of Vigor for that? Alright, whatever. Both of Nyssa. Um I probably want this thing. Rather than the thing that can just hit immediately. Because the power doubling becomes pretty neat. I have like mana to sink into it. Uh, this doesn't have haste. So I'll take my two damage, or at least try to. Um, mana leak something I need to play around? I don't know. Again, my, my familiarity with modern is low. So my opponent may have just gotten two life for free. I don't know how counter spell being printed changed, changed things in terms of like our distribution and what people are playing. Yeah, cycle away. Okay. So if I attack with creatures with total power six or greater this combat. Oh, if you attacked with creatures with 
total power six or greater this time combat attacking creatures get plus one plus oh okay so that's like a all right okay do i die to bring to light i don't think i die i think that's a tutor for an omnoth could be a tutor for a supreme verdict it could be a tutor for a lot of things like my opponent is playing a yorian deck yeah it is it is supreme verdict yeah, that's pretty good let's go ahead and fetch that tapped well, as far as things to draw off the top of the deck goes, that one's pretty good. Like, opponent's at 7. This this will drain out pretty quickly. I expect this to be the Yorian, and then, like, they'll get to draw a card off Abundant Growth. As expected. Now, it's going to come back at the end step. They have just turned Windswept Heath into something that produces mana. Alright, um... Get Bring the Light out of the Graveyard. Now I'll cast this Bard class, and we'll level it up. Now the next level up is five. So that's my turn. The opponent has three turns before I kill them with Clothis. I'm going to go to 13 from this attack. Assuming they attack, they might hold back because I have some haste creatures. Yeah. Uh, now I'll get rid of their Supreme Verdict. They're at three. Now my Bard class is fully leveled. I will play a land and pass. Opponent has two turns before they're dead to Clothis, and Bard class may do things sooner. I wonder if they have like any actual synergy with Mishra's Bobble other than just Unholy Heat. I'm guessing it's just Unholy Heat. All right. Um, let's drain an Unholy Heat out of there. All right, this is a legendary spell. So it'll cost one mana. And uh, now Bard class is going to do Bard class things. Okay, we have gotten a counter spell. That's fine. I will. Uh, I will do some mox amber. Oh, I should have floated uh, mana with the mox amber. Oh wait, I can't float. Add one mana of any color among legendary creatures or planeswalkers you control. Okay, so this isn't currently a creature, so I couldn't have floated mana. Fine. We'll uh, just cast another mox amber. I'll keep this one. All right, let's cast a domri. All right, uh, yeah, we're probably in good shape. Um, let's just cast this for free. I'm not going to use my Planeswalker ability yet. Oh, I just found a Lightning Bolt. Sick. Let's just, uh, let's just try to send that to the dome and end this. Okay, Bard class, though. Um, so on the draw, do I want Magmatic Sinkhole? Probably. Just having something that can punch through an Omnoth is totally fine. Uh, I think I'm just going to board down, like, one Oath of Nyssa and call that good. Oh, shit, I should board in this other Clothis. Uh, two Oath of Nyssas. Okay, I've got double Ragavan. I'm going to keep this hand. All right. Land go. That's fine. Is this a shock myself situation? I don't think it has to be. I think this can just be a mountain. And then I'll cast a Ragavan. We'll see whether or not the Ragavan lives. If the Ragavan lives, I get Domri on turn two. Although maybe that's not better than just like starting to work on the Bard class. Specifically since my other card in hand is just another copy of Ragavan. Alright. Oh. We gotten two damage out of Ragavan now? Or is this just a tapped fetch land? Tapped fetch land. Yeah, you know what I meant. Tap tapped land. Alright. Is Ragavan going down, or is this just going to be like a growth spiral? Oh, it is a run and six. That's quite bad for me. Uh, so I can dash Ragavan and kill run and six here. That's probably my best line. Dash. And this at run and six. And eliminate one problem. It's not mana efficient for me. <laughs> you stop it. That's a, that's a nuisance. Bard class turn. Oh, the bard class is actually better than I think it is. Because the default level is that they enter the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter. Oh, all right. Well, that's a nuisance for me. Uh, I think that means that this is just going to be a tapped fetch land. I don't want to just play Ragavan out and do a run and six minus. I can, I can use Clothis to fight against... Ren and six Fetchland recursion. I don't like the position that I'm currently in. 
the uh how much effective damage my opponent does to me right now. That's pretty bad. Now I can't just like safely play out this planeswalker. Okay. I guess I will play out Clothis and Zergo as well. I don't know. Maybe I can get to enough devotion a devotion to turn on Clothis. Okay. So the second uh, Omnoth thing is uh, kind of the scary one because it just represents a bajillion mana. All right, growth spiral. <laughs> yeah, I'm not in great shape here. Like it's turn five, my opponent's still at 17 life. I think they did most or all of that damage to themselves. They've got an Omnoth in play, a Planeswalker I can't check. And I assume that kills me? Oh. How? How is that still allowed to happen? I thought we fixed fixed the rules for most of those things. Uh okay. Uh that's rough. A uh take my cards. Um Yeah. Don't one, two, three, four, five, six devotion. I don't really know how to win. I think I would have to like draw Bard class and like effectively combo off. I think I'm just gonna take the bring the light out of the graveyard in case my opponent has a way to bring it back. Um, but I don't really have good plays this turn, fortunately. I put that into play tapped. Oh no, that was that was it might have been worth two life to activate Okina. And then, like, Domri minus and fight. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I kind of feel like I, this one is, is just totally lost. Oh, I actually can do this with the Ragavan, which otherwise isn't doing anything. Keep the 2-2 in play. Or creature you control. Yeah, okay. So the, line, the line was shock myself. Plus with Okina on Zergo and then minus and fight Omnoth. That was that was the correct line. I was not used I'm not used to this static ability on this planeswalker growing the size of my creatures and activating Okina. Yeah. Alright. I I made some errors that turn. I still think I'm going down regardless with my opponent having like multiple planeswalkers in play, but the Omnoth uh, like does not help here. I just don't have familiarity with the cards that I'm playing, if I'm being totally honest. Oh, now you have one of my Planeswalkers, too. All right. I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna go ahead and throw in the towel on this one. I. I think we're far enough gone. GG's. Okay. Uh, I am playing against an Obosh deck. I've seen an Obosh burn deck in Modern before, um, so that might be what I'm playing against. I think I'm going to keep my opening hand. Um, it has the Bard class, which is one of my best cards in my deck, obviously. Um, and if we are playing against Burn, I have multiple creatures that are effective blockers. So I don't get a, a block for this as of right now. Yeah, I suppose I'll play the, I'll, I'll play the Oath of Nyssa. Forest, Oath. And I guess I'm playing a blocker next turn. I will play my own Ragavan next turn, I guess. Uh, we'll see how quickly my opponent's Ragavan spirals out of control. I have a bunch of creatures they can hit, which is kind of worrying. All right, they get a they get a free roll Mox Amber, which does make red because Ragavan. All right, um, I think I think that confirms the burn. All right, a lot of, a lot of stuff on board over there. So, is it Bard class this turn? I can play Ragavan to block the opposing Ragavan. Or I can just play Bard class, and then next turn I level up Bard class, and I have a much better chance at actually casting multiple spells in the future, but I don't know that that's actually better than just like casting the Ragavan this turn. I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and do that accordingly. And I'm going to use my uh, Ragavan defensively. I don't want to like dash in and trade for his Soul Scour Mage. All right, didn't hit a Lightning, didn't get Lightning Bolted end step, which is nice. Is Lava Dart instead. Alright. I'm taking four. 
see how my opponent exiles an Oath of Nyssa. I don't even know if they're going to... Are they going to play that? They're going to play that. Will they get anything? A Bone Crusher Giant? Oh god. Oh, they're going with a Light Up the Stage Fury. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, this is uh, a little bit scary. I probably just need to like play either Bergy or Essica this turn. I, I just need to like... Man, the Fury is rough. Whatever I play is just going to die to it. Does that mean I play a Bergy this turn? It might mean that I just play a Bergy this turn. I have two of them. I think specifically because my opponent had Ragavan on turn one, my hand ended up being too slow, and I never got a chance to put this Bard class into play and level it up. I think without Ragavan, I could I could take some hits from this and be okay, but the Ragavan adding all of that extra acceleration is super spooky. I assume this is the Fury. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, this is gross. I'm going down. I. The next turn, there's three, six, seven, eight, nine damage showing already. I am at ten. I think I'm gonna go ahead and throw in the towel here. I'm gonna pick up some extra removal in the form of a braid, a little bit of life gain in the form of Clothis. Uh, Domery could be removal. Is that better than like say this Domery? You're also removal. Play this too. Um, I'm gonna board out this. Do I want to board out the X fours. I think this doesn't matter. Like that, the it being a one of and giving everything haste if I'm like comboing off is really cool and all, but I don't I don't think I want that. Like I I just don't think I want a five drop in my deck. Uh, I'm gonna trim one of these. I think I'm gonna just trim some oath of Nessos and call it good. And Zerko block can't block creatures with power two or greater. Okay. Um, I'll try something like this. All right. What's my opening hand look like? Um, opening hand has multiple removal spells. I think that means this is going to be a keep. One has multi five already. And capped on five. There goes no Ragavan. But it's a fine card to start on. All right. Um, so I'm going to ship in with Zergo and see if it gets removed. Seems like no. I got my damage in. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to shock for this. I think the answer is no, since I have another mountain in hand. And, like, my colors are already fixed. Alright. I've got four power in play. My opponent mold to five. He didn't have a turn one creature. I have two removal spells waiting. Or six damage to the face, depending on how things look. Uh, it's four mana to double my power. So we'll just send these in. Yep, your Lightning Bolt is fine. So that was their draw four turn. And uh, I will play a tree. So notably, I wasn't sure if there was going to be some situation where I wanted to double Lightning Bolt, so that's why I did not do this pre-combat and then attack with my creatures having Vigilance. Well, I guess if I had done that, I still had it. Oh, wow. Double, double Lava Dart. Okay. All right, I get a critter. I'll attack in. We're whopping one damage. Uh, we're not really doing anything impressive here. All of my strength is coming from the fact that my opponent uh, mulled into oblivion. All right, now they have an Obosh in their hand. I think I'm just going to hold back the lightning bolts. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I need to play out any of this stuff. All right. Opponent is a little flooded here. All right. If a source you control with an odd mana value would deal damage to a partner player, it would deal double that damage instead. Sure. So the Lava Darts deal 2 damage. Uh, unless I kill Obosh in response, actually. Then it'll deal 1. Okay, so they'll flash back the second one, which kills this. That's fine. That means I've, I've fi I effectively fizzled the first Lava Dart. Um, I don't have a lot of gas here. Uh, JK, I found some extra gas. And I'll ship in. The Vigilance here is really nice, because it means, like, haste creatures from my opponent aren't super threatening. Oh, Blast Zone is unexpected. 
I will continue to ship in. I would love to draw a bard class now. Look, I have a lot of mana. All right, there's the there's the charge counter. Now my opponent can use most of their turn to kill um, Galia, which I'm good with. Full Scour Mage is fine. I would say I'm pretty far ahead by most metrics. Not going to take any additional damage here. No need. Yeah, I'll just go ahead and send in. Okay. Let's see. So now if I attack in with this, my opponent blocks and I get a negative one counter and I don't kill this. So I don't have a good attack anymore. Land pass. I do currently feel favored by quite a bit, though. A Relic of Progenitus. Okay, I don't really understand, but that's fine. That may just be the opponent replacing some relatively dead card from their deck previously. Okay. New Critter. Game is probably going to be pretty slow. Okay. Oh, I see. The, uh... Because of the Soul Scour Mage, that just gets to hang around. Sure, that's fine. I am at 18. You can have that attack. Enjoy your one damage. All right, there's a light up the stage. Those are pretty good cards. They don't break everything wide open or anything, but they're pretty good. That Season Pyromancer is just a draw two attached to a creature. That's most excellent. All right. So the Lava Dart now finishes off that critter. All right. Oh, do I dash this? Oh, uh, I don't know if I dash that, actually. Like, Season Pyromancer going to the graveyard is value for my opponent. Yeah, I think I'm just going to cast this. I also just want to have multiple bodies in play, because, like, I know my opponent has a Lightning Bolt. So I know one of my creatures can die. Okay. Another Lava Dart is pretty annoying here. Because uh, I lose the Ragavan too. My opponent has destroyed five of their own lands. I'm just throwing that out there as a fact about what has occurred in this matchup. Alright, um, this definitely needs to be defensive. I think I need to trade with this Ragavan rather than like work on reducing my opponent's life total to zero as quickly as possible. I think I am looking to gum up the board and then I'll just like eventually draw a Bard class and do ridiculous things. Yeah, uh, goodbye, Ragavan. I think my opponent has, like, correctly roll switched into the beatdown. Oh, fuck. That's bad. I think if I miss on a draw next turn, I'm probably just going to die. I'm taking four damage here. Yeah, I think if my opponent has a respectable draw, I'm just going to die. Uh, I did not expect to lose this game after how things were faring. Uh, yep, uh, I am dead on board, because I drew, uh, like, a few too many mana sources. GG's, um, good on the opponent for turning that around. Like, maybe I was supposed to block the Soul Scour Mage with the Asuka, but, like, when your opponent makes a tr an attack like that in to, like, something that clearly beats them in combat, like, it it just felt like a trap. Okay, um, I only have one mountain here. I have to mulligan this hand. This hand is fine. I'll keep this. I'll probably throw back one land here, since I have a Mox Amber that's going to be on. I think that's fine. Oh. I've just lost my second screen for some reason. Oh, it's back. Oh, I don't think you saw an interruption for that. Um, but I... Okay, my opponent played a red chancellor or not played but had a red chancellor um i think there's some sort of polymorph fish deck that uh uses some card to transform this into like an emrakul or some something of that approximate nature yeah so i just got this new computer and the i i, I went to update my drivers this morning and the site that i would update my drivers from uh i think was experiencing some downtime or something so uh that's on my to-do list for this afternoon. Okay. My opponent is... <laughs> Jesus. Uh, that was unexpected. Okay, so they pitched the Chancellor there. Alright. So this isn't on currently. So this will just be a Rada turn. And then next turn I can play the Planeswalker. 
I think the thing that polymorphed was either three or four mana. I don't remember exactly. All right, so this is on. I have four mana available, uh, which really means I have five mana available. Grab a mountain this time. Oh, I guess I can just fight this. Is fighting this better? Just like getting rid of this creature. Fighting that might be better. And then I'll just ship in for three. Yes, I will. I will add the red mana that I can't do anything with in the middle of combat. Okay, cool. So stuff can't be countered. Green. Play that tapped. Bash in with that. All right, doing the thing. Don't need the mana this time. All right, we uh, we may have stopped my opponent from doing whatever exactly it is that they want to be doing. Well, I guess I should attack first in case my opponent makes some random creature mid combat. I don't expect that to happen. My opponent goes to four, and then I'll just plus that for mana and pass the turn. Okay, got there. Um. I am going to board in the Cinder Vines. I don't remember exactly what it is my opponent puts in or how they do it, but in case it's something like a Platinum Empyrean, this is fine, I think. I think this is going to be better than just, like, one random top-end card. Maybe both of these random top-end cards should go. Like, I'm looking to reduce my opponent's life total to zero pretty quickly here. Uh, it could Blood Moon, uh, but I'm not familiar enough with the deck to know whether or not that's something I should actually do. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep this opening hand. It has a Ragaman. Ragaman and a Domri is a pretty good start. Alright, so Copperline Gorge. Cast a Ragavan. Play Mox Amber, but it makes red, so I can't play Oath of Nyssa, so I guess I'll just pass the turn here. Alright. Glimpse of Tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, that's that's one of the polymorph things. Um, so I would like to get my opponent dead quickly, basically. I'm always playing Mox. I think I play Issaka then. Requires me to fetch. So let's cast my my little tree friend. Ragavan will attack, get me a treasure. Alright. Now I have two mana available, which probably means that I should just cast this Oath of Nyssa and leave my treasure for next turn. Grab a Bergy. Yeah, next turn's probably pretty good. I get I get two attacks to kill my opponent. Uh, I'm not sure if that's actually going to happen. Okay. Seasoned Pyromancer. I can get some stuff out of the way here. Okay. So, let's play Bergy. We'll then cast a Lightning Bolt, which is fr uh, effectively free. Now, alright, so I'll cast this Domri. My creatures get bigger. You are going to fight you. Just get you out of the way. Ragavan can crash in for three and get a treasure. And Omnoth. I need another mana, so I have red one one. Can't quite get to that, unfortunately. I could cast, cast a new Domri, but I don't think that really nets me anything. Well, sometimes it does. I think I'm going to save it in hand, though. So I have four... Five, six, seven, eight, nine. I need to deal two more damage to my opponent next turn. I have some haste creatures I can draw. Oh no. This is this is bad. So they're gonna go through most of their deck and pick up a glimpse. Okay. So that wasn't too bad. Why are you attacking with those? Oh, I see. They're attacking my planeswalker. Yeah, that's that's fair. Okay. That's fine. I have another. Oh no, they have they have more things to do with their turn. Okay. Their life total is getting dangerously low. Okay. GTV investigate twice. So another glimpse comes off next turn. Uh which is probably pretty bad for me. I'm gonna cast this. Now do I just like fight and get something out of the way? Or do I save this for post-combat? Well, the Chancellor is going to disappear anyway, right? The Chancellor is going to disappear anyway. So let's have the Bergy fight a Shardless Agent and just get one of their permanents out of the way. And now I'm not sure that my attacks are really great. 
I, lo I lose one creature to this, I probably lose a second creature to this, and I can do like two damage. I think I'm more likely to win if I hold back and my opponent um, somehow magically just hits a bunch of shardless agents or something. All right. Oh, fuck. Um, well, this is probably going to be cool. So they're going to fury away two of my creatures, and then they're going to get two goblin dark dwellers, the glimpses, twice. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. This board is not scary. Let's let's roll into something like this again. Oh no. Yeah, that's multiple furies left on board, I think. Plus a bunch of plant blockers. Oh. Fury hits planeswalkers too. That's sick. Alright, so there goes my board. And uh yeah. Uh we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and whack the concede button there. That was that was pretty cool. Yeah, um, I don't think I have time to cast Oath of Nissa's. I think I just need to be doing things to get my opponent dead or get their blockers out of the way. Get some upgrades in there to take out things like, well, I guess Charlotte's Agent is a bad example because that will uh, probably just be killing me effectively. Uh, but I think the upgrades are fine for other things. Goblin tokens or uh, not young pyromancer, seasoned pyromancer. And I don't know. Both this and Domri are probably of approximately similar power level. Um, I don't think this hand is strong enough. Uh, this hand is fine. I'll throw back my redundant Zergo. All right, they get to they get to start with the Duder. So I can just play Clothis next turn. Not really doing much right now, though. Like, there's literally nothing in the graveyard for it to eat. That probably means I'm just playing Rada. Doesn't even have haste. Nope. Can't pay for it that way. So this one needs to be the green. This can be the red. Rada, Stomping Ground. No. Ash with Zergo. We'll see if my opponent blocks. I'm guessing no. Like they want to have a decent number of permanents uh, for their glimpse. All right. Okay, so they're they're just gonna investigate, increase their permanent count. Ragavan. Sure. I am happy enough with dashing that repeatedly. Um, so that'll be my colorless. I'll make red. Send all this in. I don't really have a lot to do with that Rada mana. It's like basically lightning bolt or bust. Not not surprised to see the trade for Ragavan. Card is quite valuable. Uh, unfortunately, that does mean that I don't get to clothe this this turn. Now there's stuff in the graveyard, which is nice. Uh, we'll see if I just die here, though. Uh, yeah. I mean, there's still some RNG to this. Uh, what do you do? Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, make a food. Oh, yeah, like that wasn't bad. This doesn't kill me. My opponent makes a bunch of uh, bonus permanents, but they 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 made a pair of four twos for their combo turn. That's that's OK. It's it's better than my board, admittedly. But this doesn't kill me. Oh, some treasures are going. Oh, all right. Yeah, their their board did get scary. Uh, I am probably the defensive deck now, unfortunately. I don't think my Clothis is going to be enough for me to uh, stabilize this game. Unless... Unless I get to, like, turn this on next turn. In which case, like, there's an outside chance I could win. I have one creature that can block these. I think I'm just going to take the damage this turn, because I can make these same trades next turn, but I might be able to get some extra Clothis value. I think if I miss on my, like, on a red-green card, I probably can't win. Oh god. Alright. How bad could it be? Yep. Yeah, yep, yep. That's, that, that's fine. GG's. 
All right, final round. Uh, opening hand does not produce mana. Mulligan. Uh, this is a reasonable hand. I'll keep this and uh, probably toss back a stomping ground. All right. Operation Monkey is a go. What is this? Okay. Oh my gosh, Mox Amber is going to do something. Holy moly. It's just uh, mentally preparing for my outro, and I was about to talk about like how the Mox had been underwhelming, and now we actually get a... Uh, a better turn to play because of it. Alright. Valakut Awakening. Alright, so we might be playing against like some Oops All Spells variant. So let's plus and then I can play Rada. And now I'm now I'm kinda running on empty. I do admittedly have six power in play on turn two though, so that's a thing. Yeah, sure is looking like oops. Ooh. Don't kill me. Oh no. Oh no. Okay. False alarm. Oh, I can dash Zergo. I think that damage will probably be worth it. Dash. Get in for nine. I don't have anything to do with that mana. Spike field hazard. One damage to any target. Sure. I will send that at your dome. I've already activated this. So that's my turn. So if if my opponent can kill me this turn, I I have no no recourse. Feel like we got a little lucky there. Okay. Um I am not familiar enough with the modern variant of this to know how it kills, so I don't know whether or not something like Veil of Summer actually stops what my opponent is doing. I probably need to look at a list here. Modern Oops all spells. Okay, I tried to do some quick searching, and it looks like most of the builds that are appearing when I Google it still have Simeon Spirit Guide, which is not currently legal in Modern. So that doesn't really help me. Uh, I think I'm going to play Cinder Vines and Blood Moons and go from there. Uh, let's board out this. I don't think I have time to play, like, an Oath of Nyssa. I just, I just need to be doing things that either reduce my opponent's life total to zero or give me a good chance at winning the game on the spot. Uh, Clothis may be better than Samut, um, assuming I can turn it on. I also could, I guess, play the one of Weather the Storm, but I don't know that I'm going to have mana held up at the right time. Okay, so my opening hand has Ace Creature attacking on turn two, or playing Rada on turn two, and a Clothis. So I have two, four, I have six of seven devotion already for Clothis. Is this hand fast enough? Hand's not bad. I just don't know if this hand is good enough that I want to keep it. Like, I already have one dead card in this, and I have no turn one attacker. I think I'm going to ship this. This hand is worse. I think. Alright, so turn two bard class. Turn three level up. Cast Galia for free. Actually, maybe this hand is, is fine. On turn three, I can cast Galia and... What is it? Tang? Targ. Um, I can cast Galia and Targ for free. Rowing back Domri. I might keep this. Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw back to Mox Amber here. If I spike a land. I have turn three Galia plus Tang plus Domri. All right, tapped land. All right, redrew Mox Amber. So that means I, I do have that really sick turn three lined up. But I, I don't quite have a feel for how fast my opponent can go and how consistent their deck is. All right. Another tap land and strike it rich. Blood Moon. Less good now that my opponent has a treasure. I'll slam this bard class. I need to level it up and then my next turn is really good. Oh, there is also the world where find a cursed idol, create a treasure token, and venture into the dungeon. Cool. All right. So I'm gonna assume that my opponent is uh, is not gonna finish that dungeon. This is the first time I've actually seen a dungeon in play in Legacy. I have uh, just conceded to Acerac on the stack every time because I didn't want to uh like click through that. All right. 
With my opponent having two treasures, I don't know that this Blood Moon is good. And with my opponent creating this many treasures, I like probably shouldn't have boarded in Blood Moon in the first place. Classic. All right, so let's level that up. I'll play the Mox Amber. Cast Galia for free. Cast this for free. I will cast this for one mana. I will just plus this. This mana isn't doing anything for me this turn. Bash in for four. Um, there's a world where I kill my opponent next turn, but they might kill me this turn. It, uh, it feels like it's about time for them to kill me. Okay, more strike it rich. Tapped land is good. Tapped land is a very good sign. Okay, uh, unfortunately this is legendary, so I don't get to attack in with this as well. Okay, so this mana will empty, unfortunately. That means that I just need to double its power prior to attacking. So let's double this. I have 12 damage showing, plus this trigger, uh, which I believe is 14. Just, uh, man, if I had drawn a different critter there, well, then I guess I wouldn't have like, used, well, I don't know. Oh, it's a Goblin Charbelcher. Now, Blood Moon would not have impacted that. Uh, 48 cards entered the revealed zone. Hmm. I'm no mathematician. That seemed pretty good. I mean, we got our opponent to two. All right. Um, do I want to weather the storm? I guess I actually should have, like, looked at my opponent's deck, huh? Oh, I guess I can look at it in the chat log here. Yeah, it looks like they were, they're they pretty much on the Goblin Charbelcher plan. Um, seeing as they're playing Blood Moons, I should probably board my Blood Moons out. I got a braid and destroy treasure tokens. That kind of seems medium. I think I'm just going to keep things with power and toughness in the deck. Okay, um, this is a bard class hand. Uh, this is not a particularly good bard class hand, though. Hey, I'm going to mulligan this one. Uh, this is a ragavan hand, so I think I'm pretty much going to keep those no matter what. This is a Rag ragavan into Domri, into Clothis, and then I hope that we can get enough devotion to turn Clothis into a creature. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to throw back a land or a lightning bolt. They are of approximate value. I think since I have the turn one ragavan, I'm going to throw back a land. Not 100% sure that that's correct, but it's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and take the damage here. I have this, uh, what is it, Okina? I have this Okina that I might end up activating at some point in this game. So I want to guarantee that I have my colors, like, all sorted out. Tapped land. All right. Go hit with Ragavan. This will drop the opponent to 18 and notably give me the treasure I need to cast my cards. Yeah, I'm just going to ignore that. And to do this, I'll go ahead and plus it for no value. Well, I guess that's not no value. I can just send a lightning bolt upstairs immediately. Now this does add fuel to the graveyard. I suppose I could have cast the spike field hazard then for one damage. Although, I don't know, mana might be a bottleneck on my end, so I might just want to like cast the card that does three damage rather than the card that does one damage. It depends whether or not I, like, draw live and what I hit off my opponent's deck. Okay, another tapped land. I mean, I love to see a haste creature here. I'm just going to go ahead and plus this for red. Actually, is it more damage if I play Clothis now? Shit. Um, yeah, it's more damage if I play Clothis now. Um, but I should have done this post-combat if I was going to do this. Because I have more flexibility depending on what I hit with the Ragavan. Okay, uh, JK about that part about hitting with the Ragavan. I was mostly in, like, goldfish mode, where I was just assuming my opponent was never going to interact with me. Oh no, they're doing things. Uh-oh. Okay. I get one more spell. And I'm dead. GG's. Alright, uh, so that was an impressive 1-4 with Bard class. Overall thoughts on the deck list? Um, fun, but I think it still needs some tuning. Mox Amber was really awkward because a lot of times it didn't actually make me a second one drop. 
So there were a lot of times where I had like Ragavan Oath of Nyssa or Zergo Oath of, Oath of Nyssa. And then the Mox Amber, despite like being a functional Mox at that point, doesn't actually allow you to cast two spells. And there were a decent number of times where like my mana numbers didn't quite work out one way or another. So like in the first round, I was I was mana starved and I couldn't get to enough mana to get the Bard class going. And then there were other times where I didn't quite have mana sinks, but I had plenty of mana. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about Oath of Nyssa in the deck. Like, I get that you want to have, like, some cantrips and selection, but if this can just be more, like, one or two drop creatures, I think that probably is going to end up being better for the deck. It's, like, better when you start comboing, and it's better for just, like, your aggressive starts. Because on the times where you don't just, like, combo and win with Bard class, you're still trying to be, like, a girl aggro deck. So I would like to get rid of the Oath of Nyssas for other other creatures. I, I don't know what. I don't know the legendary creatures at cmc one and two in red and green well enough to tell you what to play there but i would be looking to replace these with some other creatures i boarded this card out every single round just because it was a four drop i want my things lower on the curve um the isikas and burgies uh for example are just like not things that contribute to early aggressive starts and i think that's important this does allow you to level up the bard class though so like there is definitely something to that there um as far as the sideboard goes i felt like the sideboard was acceptable but not impressive i don't know i don't know what the the sideboard is like missing or whatever but there are some things that we're clearly not touching at all right so for example there's zero graveyard hate in this deck and i don't know if that's correct because like what are we going to Wait, is Uro still legal in Modern? Or did Uro get banned in Modern? I don't know. If Uro is legal in Modern, I want to have answers to something like that. Um, but more generally, uh, I, I am kind of afraid of, like having just like nothing that interacts with the graveyard at all other than Clothis, because Clothis is just so very slow. Um, I don't know that we're fast enough to beat opposing combo consistently, so I do feel like we do need some degree of interaction versus them. Um, but this was this was a fun you know fun brew you can have some laughs at an fnm with this anyway i hope you enjoyed if you did click the like button it helps me out a lot if you want to see more of my content please subscribe for legacy modern and vintage content five days a week and if you're really enjoying the donation information is available in the video description or you could join and gain access to the member only videos have a great rest of the day see ya